So hi, a long time no video and the reason being is that I was actually doing something and this is what I've been doing. Now, before we start, this is, a, I would say, in a very deep beta, but I think it should come out in a month maximum. Okay, so before we start, uh, what is this? So this is an application that I created that basically converts everything to everything. Uh, and I'm going to show you how it works now. Have in mind that it might crash, it might uh, do something wrong because, again, as I said, it's beta. This has like 4,000 lines of code. So, yeah, you have to uh, forgive me at this moment. So, uh, why, why did I actually make this app? Well, I've been watching Louis Rosman like since forever and uh, I agree with him. You know, today you have to, to create PDF, you have to go online because there are no apps that are local. Everything that's in Linux is mostly, well, command line. It, although, to be fair, uh, uh, Linux Mint, I've been using it for a while, and uh, it, most of the things you can do with GUI. Okay, so uh, why I created that? Well, uh, I work in IT support for a company, and every now and then somebody calls me and tells me, you know, can you convert Apple iPhone's HIC file, HIC, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, to JPEG or to TIFF or whatever. And then I have to connect to their computer and or they send me an email and I convert it. Okay, so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna bypass everything. And why? Because if they go online, if you upload your private data to the uh, online servers, they do not delete it right away. I don't know if you ever noticed that uh, when you upload something for conversion, it will be kept there for eight hours and not you know, until you download the file, which is basically instantly. So I just don't tr trust, you know, such services because uh, the time has proven that, you know, from Cambridge Analytica to everything else, uh, you, you won't own everything, including your data. So let me show you how this thing works. Now, as I said, have in mind that this is just like a preview of a software. Okay, so we have a WebP. You want to convert it to, I don't know, JPEG. Click, start, puff. Do you want to delete original? Yes. Okay, now you have a JPEG. You have a JPEG. You want to convert it to HTML? Yes. Do you want to embed it in HTML? Yes. And um, what can I open it? Uh, I don't want to open, uh, just a second, you know. Okay, so I needed to hide my bookmarks just to be safe, you know. But there you have it. This is the uh, HTML created. <laughs> cremated, sorry. You have an HTML. Do you want to convert it back to JPEG? Yes. Oh, sorry, I, uh, that, that's the buggy part. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah. as I said, that's the buggy part. Okay, but whatever. We have a PNG. Do you want it to convert it to icon? Yes, for PC, for Mac. Compressed, uncompressed, compressed. There you go, we have an icon. Um, yeah, and by the way, <laughs> compressed icons, for some reason, don't work on... Uh, my computer and I think th that, uh, it, I mean, it does work on Mac and I've just noticed that I have a wrong extension. It should be ICN something. It will be fixed. Okay, sorry. We have Hake. We wanted to convert it to bitmap. Start. Yes, we have a bitmap. There you have it. It's in here. Can we open it? Yes, yes, we can. It's working perfectly. We have like multiple images, let's say. Hake and bitmap. We want to convert it to PDF and this is, I'm not quite sure whether this thing will work or not. You know what? Let's see. Let's try to combine them. And now, as I said uh, preview, sorry, um, it's not done yet, but you will be able to uh, drag and drop files. I think you can actually do it now as well. I'm not quite sure if I finished that or not. Let's see if I drag this. Yeah. If I drag, if I drop this thing. Okay. PDF, combine. Yeah, I didn't finish it. Okay, let's go with something else. You want to convert it to EPUB or Open Office document? Start. Click on Start. Yes. Now you have an Open Office document. There you have it. But that's not all. I have like a test file which is flag. So let's move it in the Untitled folder. I can actually delete it. This is the entire list of everything that I currently am working on and will support. And there are like tons of files. So okay, we have a flag file. We want to convert it to wave. Yes. Now we have a wave. Perfect. Do we want to delete original? You know why not? We have a WAV file. We can do one. Do we want to convert it to MP3? Yes. You can choose quality. It even says which quality we have, and it's converting it now. So, 
Is it done? Yes. Now we have an MP3. Okay. We have that MP3 to what do we want to convert it to flag? Okay. Do we want to delete original? No. We can drag multiple files and convert them to wave. Now they're both named the same, so this thing will not work because I haven't finished that. But if we select multiple files like this and create wave, we'll get two wave files. Do we want to delete original? Yes. So basically you can drag and drop multiple files of each sort. So for example, in here I have archive. ISO, drag and drop, yes. Folder is created with uh, files inside. Do we want to delete? Okay, I'm, I, I don't want to delete it because uh, I currently, uh, I'm still testing it and I'm still programming this. So I need those, these are actually dummy test files. But again, you can drag drop multiple files and it will create uh, such folders. So I think that this version of this software will be called Clippy Strikes Back. And basically you can, uh, for example, you can have multiple documents, drag drop them, convert them to TXT. If they have TXT, they will be converted to TXT. If not, there will be error. But as you see, this is Word. Because uh, I think this one is, yes, this is Word. So basically it takes out the text and converts them. So I think this thing is going to be awesome because I haven't seen converters such as this one uh, that's not online, that does not require subscription, that does not do so many stupid things. You know, when I was a kid, I always like felt that the future is going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, I feel it's not. You know, when they say uh, that you won't own anything, I think they really mean it. Anyway, you will be able to own this. Now, I am thinking about pricing. What would you, what should you be willing to pay for this software? Now, uh, I will be adding support to download videos in the future. I will be adding support to Max Movies in the future. And this thing will work on PC, on Mac and on Linux. I'm currently on Linux. Um, now, the one thing regarding Mac and PC, I have so many dependencies that this software requires because this is this uses most, well, not most, if, if not most third party tools to do this, what it's doing. So what would OK price for you be? Now I'm considering to make it like 10, maybe 20 euros for, get a lot of this, perpetual license. And since I am actually I'm basically so happy that I switched to Linux that I'm going to switch my entire company to Linux. We, uh, we currently have Windows 11, which is a piece of shit software. Sorry for saying it like that, but yeah. And uh, if you have Linux, registration is not required for Linux. This software will be free. This will be my contribution to the, uh, well, everybody in the Linux community. So yeah. Um, I don't know what else to show you. There are so many features. I might have forgotten a couple of them, but basically you can convert from anything to anything. And it's a simple drag and drop. And once you close it, no, you know, zero of your data is stored anywhere else but on your computer. Now, if you do switch on Linux, uh, I'm not quite sure whether I will be open sourcing this thing or not, at least for some time now, but I might. I mean, yeah, I really might. Uh, so yeah, if you like this video, please click thumbs up. If you have any comments, please, you know, leave them down below. And uh, what would okay amount of money would be for you to pay? And by the way, I already did make a registration screen and I decided to, I decided not to, uh, well, not to create a, an online registration. So this, uh, uh, for example, I think that this software will be so easy to crack. So if you're a hacker, you know, and I will be leaving an Easter egg inside of the uh, software. So if you are a hacker and uh, you find uh, Easter egg, I will be sending a license for free. Again, the reason why I'm not making an online activation is because if this thing manages to, you know, to get some, some I don't know, traction and some company wants to buy it, I am pretty certain that they will change the rules of my license by not being perpetual. So by making this a local activation, your software is your software. So yeah, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. And uh, 
thank you for watching and if you like this video click click sorry it's 1:45 a.m please click thumbs up if you did not you know what to do and i don't know have a great day i guess cheers